Well, this is the this is a Saturday evening. And uh, I know I have not, I have not been publishing video in my channel for a pretty long time, I guess like a month or more. Well, I have been busy on last month. I have been busy on uh, the mid-year test that uh, to keep me current on the skill I need for my work. And for this month, I got some cold. Actually, it's not a cold. I have a sore throat, and uh, it makes my saliva and all the fluid in my throat thicker. And then, uh, when I went on an airplane, and uh, I got ear block because of the thickening saliva. Ah, uh, so I have both sore throat and uh, ear block. And they just recover. So today, uh, I would like to have a a speech. Uh, it's gotta be a pretty long video, and so if you just don't want to listen to a guy who want to share an experience of uh, FPV without 3D printing parts, and then you have to move on. And uh, watching something else, or looking on some, looking and uh, listening to something else. But if, but if you decide to stick on to this video, then let's let's start. Well, I don't have a three D printing. Uh, I don't, and uh, I mean three D print part is is good, is good, is is perfect. Like, like this, I used to use 3D really printing parts, and it works very, very well. Uh, no, no comment and no offense for the 3D parts, but uh, the the process to get it is not is not work for my life, because well, uh, for me, the local guy that offer a 3d printing service it just uh, uh if it's the design that they they have already it shouldn't be a problem just the shipping wait the wait for the shipping and uh, the waiting for the part to be finished and the shipping it's just frustrating enough uh for me it take about a week to get a 3D printing part no matter how small it is it will take me about a week firstly because of the shipping process and secondly because of my work my lifestyle when I when I go to work I, I usually when I usually go uh, away from my place uh, mostly abroad in other countries other countries and uh, when I got back it just it just like two or three days passed already so waiting for the shipping and waiting for me to finish my work and got back all in all it takes about a week for me to get a 3d printing part and it's not that's not uh, bad enough Things, things got worse <laughs> because, because if the part is a custom print, just like I, I, I finding the printing design I want from Thinkiverse, and then I, I send the design, the file to the guy who offered the printing service, and then he print it wrongly or he doesn't understand my need and and choose and print another design instead of what I want and then uh, then I, I waste the whole week waiting waiting eagerly to get the part and 
finally disappointed and waste the time and waste the money. So, 3D printing is just, it doesn't work for me. And learning on how to, to, to print the parts myself, it just, it just take too much effort and investment. Uh, so, it uh, bother me all the time about 3D printing part. Well, so I invented something along the way that I uh, that I play. I will, I will I will say I played because I didn't earn any any dime for it. I would like to earn, but uh, it's not my main work, and it doesn't seem to cost much. I mean, it doesn't seem to make a lot of money. So I play along the way. I play FPV for three years plus, more than three years already. I invented something that replaced the three D printing parts, just like this antenna mounting. Is made from plastic bottle, just like this camera mounting. It's pretty solid, and uh, all the parts that I'm gonna show you on in this video, all parts is work like a charm. No defect, no drawback, no. It just work as it used as it's supposed to be because I have been through trial and errors along the way in order to make it work so the antenna mounting the camera mounting the camera mounting made from is made from uh, cable and tie and, uh, and super glue plus baking soda and it's a tiny thing that needs precision in order to make it right so if you want to make it uh, yourself you I I'm pretty sure that you have to been through uh, mistakes has been to many errors but well I know how to do it exactly right at the first time because I have failed before <laughs> and other things like oh yeah and just another tip about the sticky pad of the battery if you are the one that uses sticky pad and you probably concerned about getting it dirty uh, unnecessarily by placing it on surface that is dusty or have or has debris on the surface so I protect it with a piece of plastic like this and now I can place it anywhere I want without uh, make making the sticky pad dirty and then the GoPro mounting which is made from like the Mr. Steel, death is does it just a form actually pieces of form <laughs> but if you do it right you just need just a piece of foam and uh, it's work and then another antenna mount for the XC2 and if you can see here the motor wiring protection motor wires protection just another plastic bottle it's just another piece of plastic bottle we just need four piece and it's never cracked because of the propeller it bend it twist but it's never cracked and my motor wire is never broke because of the propellers again. And 
and, and it weighed nothing comparing to 3D printing part for wire protection. It will weigh at least 2 or 3 grams per piece. <laughs> it doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> you just use a plastic bottle, a piece of plastic bottle, and that's it. It's light, it's durable, it works. And then uh, there's some parts that I use. Another thing, oh yeah, 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 yeah. The bat battery guard. All my FPV life, I only bought three battery guards, and this is the one that that is survived. Uh, but later on, battery guard, 3D from 3D printing is not is not work because when you buy a new battery and you have a strange shape, a new size battery in a new size, and you probably unable to use the same battery guard the way you want it. I mean, yeah, you can put it like this, but if you don't want it like this. You want it like this, then you have to buy a new battery card, which is not makes any sense for me. So at first, I try to make my own battery card, and yeah, I start with plastic bottle as well, and then add more protection with foam. Like I keep foam pieces from various things that have been through my life. <laughs> the boxes, the packaging, all the thing. I I just like whoa, there's that foam in this packaging. I, I put it out, I keep it until the day that it becomes useful. So it may add protection with the foam and then wrap all wrap it with a duct tape and some kind of another tape like this that uh, the tape that has fiber in it I don't know what it's called and I make a slot for the battery strap so that it doesn't so that uh, so that I don't have to use extra long battery strap to wrap around it and it kind of locking mechanism this is it it works and it survived crashes through these three years already I guess at least more than two years already so it just worked like that and it saved my batteries I have four of these battery I mean this size four of this kind of battery or uh, I mean the size of the battery and uh, it it all survived and I move on for the battery protection and move on because if I buy a new battery I don't want to make another battery guard it takes too much time even though if I made a new one again, it, it would take less time than I made this first piece. But uh, it takes time anyway, like a couple of hours, if not a day. So um, even though I know exactly what to use and how to use, what materials to use and how to do it, but it just takes time and I don't want to make a new one again. So now today from now nowadays when I buy a battery I just add the protection for that battery like this it just adding the form yeah the same form adding the form onto the corner that you think that is gonna be most likely crashed and yeah, add the form as thick as you want and 
uh, as thick as your uh, heat shrink tube can uh, cover so after you add in the foam then you cover it with the heat shrink tube and then heat shrink it and you can redo it again just cut the, t the part of the heat shrink that you don't uh, that you need to uh, repress the protection the protection out cut that part of heat shrink tube out and then replace the protection and then rub it with another new heat shrink again and then it works and uh, I, this is the one, the one that has been that has been using from for a long time already almost a year or so so it has scratches on the surface and this is a new uh, the one that I just uh, redo the protection just wrap, just uh, the form has been damaged so I unwrap it and add new form and then wrap it again and then it's good as new and the battery is safe from the impact from the catches from from the scratches well it works and it's easy to do and it's use just 15 minutes or so well then uh, then I move on this is the quad that is still in the building process and it doesn't need a piece of 3D printing although there are a whole lot of modification onto the frame firstly I want the camera the HD camera which is the GoPro Session 5 to be on the position that nothing will be in the field no props in the field no frame in the field so the position is need to be at this place so but uh, initially at this position there's nothing to place HD camera because the frame itself is like this in the front it's the same thing it's like this there's nothing here to place the camera so I need to stick a, a carbon fiber plate on it and I'll tighten it with a, a two side tape and a cable ties and then I place the form for the camera mounting for my GoPro and yes as you can see that the cutting of the form is is improved it <laughs> I like this one right <laughs> this one is oh it's, it's so neat and yes I learned something along the way in order to make it work and uh, near and become more perfect and then the camera it has to be on this position next to the GoPro but uh, you know to attach the camera at this position there's nothing to mount it so use uh, that kind of thing the aluminum mounting for the FPV camera it it used to be look like this but bigger so I bend it into my desired shape and then slot it in on the front arm and tape it with two side tape and lock it with another cable tie and then attach the camera it is nano camera so it's wet like nothing just two side tape is enough to uh, to stick it on the mounting and here it is very cool and then the antenna mount is here well the design of the camera position is defined everything on this quad because the, the GoPro has to be here so the proper cannot be on the top 
because there's no place for the problem here so the problem need to be the underside and if the problem is on the underside then there's no place to uh, to mount the battery so the mount really ha battery has to be on the top along this area so there will be no space for the electronics so the electronics has to be on the on the underside so the antenna has to be on the top then I have to make uh, antenna mounting special antenna mounting in order to clear the antenna from the battery as much as possible but not too high because I don't want to make these things look like a spiky uh, that I don't want this quad to be like everything is spiked on the <laughs> all the way around but uh, yeah it more look like yeah it already spiked <laughs> well and because the propeller is on the underside then I have I then I need landing gear and here it is the landing gear is made from a single piece of plastic bottle and it's, it works very solid very rigid that it will not well um, vibrate by the wind on the down force of the propeller it's solid rigid and it works and plenty of clearance between the proper and the ground and it can land on a rough surface as well and uh, the immortal T antenna mounting is just temporary uh, that day I was so exhausted from making this thing to work well uh, so I just make these things up with cable tires just to find out if I can making some mounting that is quick to do well it works but it looks so ugly I will change it into something nicer later well and so this quad is just like the sum of all the technique I have in order to make the parts that 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 replace 3d printing parts well uh, uh, by all that I was thinking about the other day I was thinking about making a video that will show you how I made those those parts but since but since it cost me so much effort and time in order to make it in order to to make it correctly and make it work without any problem it cost me so much time and energy and I was thinking about if I if the things I learned were worth enough to charge some money from others it uh, well it definitely save you money if you can make nothing like this from scrap it definitely will save you money if you can if you can make camera mounting like this and definitely save you time on waiting for the shipping parts to come but uh is it worth it it's just a tiny thing and it cost yeah it costs something plus shipping cost it costs something like five dollars ten dollars per piece but for someone that kind of price range is just nothing and those guys just those guys that $10 is nothing and he has time to wait 
then uh, he just order pretty printing parts and uh, skip all the work to others and uh, but if you are a general guys like me and you interested in making these parts by yourself so that you don't have to pay extra money on the little things so that you don't have to wait for the parts to arrive so that you don't have to spending time searching for the right 3D printing part for your quad is it worth it to pay just like a dollar US dollar on learning how to make this for example is it, is it worth to spend a dollar for a PDF file on explaining how to make this camera mounting is it worth it to spend a dollar to make uh, to spending a dollar to make to learn how to make battery mount battery card in the right way because every piece of tiny parts I I've learned it hard way because you, you just cannot learn it from any others no one make it no one makes it well let's say I pioneer all the things for you if you want to learn from me well if you see my shelves I keep all the garbage the plastic bottle all the things you will see every shelf have some kind of garbage because I learn by trial and error if you see my table yeah there are piles of uh, experiment <laughs> yeah it's a garbage but uh, it's a garbage from experiment uh, yeah so that's a hard I've been through so my my concern is that should I charge something back is it worth it for you so if you're interested put your answer in the comments below comment section below well I'm thinking about making a PDF file explaining on how to use how to do this camera mounting and I will charge about a US dollar for it. That's the initial plan, but I'm I'm not sure whether it's worth it or not and how the community and how other guys in the hobby or in this hobby will will I mean you think about it but and if there there's no one interested in it then I think I just have to keep this skill onto myself <laughs> well that's be all for this video thank you for watching and don't forget to provide your answer <laughs>